Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Monday morning trading room. Sorry I'm a little bit late here. I was waiting for the market to open. I didn't realize that it had already opened. A bit of a soft start here to the day, which we will see here in just a second. Uh, we're past the opening buzzer. Usually, um, I can tell because the market starts moving a little bit more briskly, but not today. Today, the market is very subdued to start anyways. Here now the stop it. Here now the daily NASDAQ chart. The NASDAQ, my, my market of choice. I think it's a pretty tough market to beat overall. And here you go now. So we're still very much in an uptrend. I have to admit, I'm a little bit surprised that these resistance zones here did not have more influence on the market, but so far they're not. So far, we keep pressing higher. And we'll just keep going with it. Until it shows us something to the contrary. as though right now we're just kind of continuing what was going on most of Friday. Namely, we are more or less stuck in a very large sideways trading range. Friday's open did have a little bit of a rally to it, but after that it settled in and we really haven't gone too far. It's kind of Bouncing back and forth. It's funny, normally Monday mornings, the market's a little bit more active. Just wait it out. Not much you can do uh, when things like this are going on.
So I trust you, everyone had a nice weekend. Mine was crazy busy, but what else is new? And temperatures all of a sudden became more normal <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, this winter season was very long for this part of the world. Temperatures were below seasonal up until yesterday, and all of a sudden, temperatures hopped 10 degrees centigrade, which is almost like 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, not that much, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe. So we go from very low spring-like temperatures to very warm spring-like temperatures. which was very welcome. I think everybody was relieved to finally have some nicer weather. The weather's been very odd this year, though. You know, we see some of the forecasts, some of the weather that's been making its way through the states. Florida, really cold. Well, cold for uh, Florida, <laughs> not cold for uh, the Pacific Northwest. Actually, what we were watching uh, some of the golf tournament on the weekend, and what made everybody down there bundle up, made everybody wear shorts and short sleeve shirts up here. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. All right. Getting a bit of a bearish bent, maybe? I don't know. We're really mixed up here this morning. The Hawk producing a first micro macro cross lower. The Falcon, the trend line's changing over. Here on the Eagle and the Raptor, we're into the hard edge, which the band is getting very, very narrow. I think, I think, I think by default, I may tend to stay more bullish. We're coming up on the quarter to the hour mark, which as if I haven't told you before, is my least favorite time of the day to trade. What's annoying about the quarter to the hour mark is that very often it will spark a rally at this time. And you can see some significant moves. However, more often than not, you get the the head fake kind of move where the market throws this signal up at you and you get on board only to watch as the market moves the other way. Well, we do have a decent second push opportunity on this number one signal. I don't know if I want to try anything just yet.
you know, we're really close to these highs. Some of Friday's highs. What if we drew a bit of a trend line across here? Where would that put us? Yeah, we still got that trend line to overcome. Bollinger is in sync now with this hard edge bounce here on the Eagle. So at least according to the Bollinger suite and the Eagle band, for that matter, we are looking at a slightly more bullish market. All right, let's go for it. The Falcon now in sync. I'm going to do this here on the Raptor. This now going to be my second push on the number one signal. I'm going to get my exit order out of the way. And this should come in nicely with the quarter to the hour mark. So I can kick myself later if it doesn't work out. It's still a little bit of back and forth. The Bollinger is now kind of moving away from that, just confirming the sideways trading range. What I am going to do is I am going to close out this order. And I think I'm going to treat this as a sideways range. Not quite out of the open because we did open down here and open with a bit of a rally. But I'm going to look here now for a breakout. I'm going to look for a breakout, a retest. You can see we've also produced a number three signal. So back to back signals. Okay, there's the break. Not a bad move, actually, off of that that signal. It would have been very close, if not at our high probability profit objective. I'd like to see another bearish bar here, but we are t testing the top end of this little trading zone that we identified. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for an opportunity to put my, just in case the market continues higher, order.
I suspect we are near the trend line. Yes, we are. So we got the same kind of thing going on here with the Eagle now, where we're retesting the breakout. We've got a first micro macro cross on the Hawk. The Falcon trend change signal coinciding with the number one signal here on the Raptor looks as though it may have also found its profit objective. Maybe a little reluctantly. Okay, they may not give me another chance here. So, oh, see, there they go. They're already moving. So I'm going to buy in with my order above there. Get my exit order out of the way. Okay. All right, there we go. Let's see if we get any giddy up. Our modest little profit target. I guess I'd better move my stop back to its original position.
Well, here we go. We're back in a holding pattern. I think I'm going to roll my stops a little bit more. Take a little, I'm rolling back to this retest point that we had. Come on. I think I'm going to put a little trend line below here as a bit of a guide. <laughs> There we go. See, the by adding a trend line below here, we actually added a little bit of support for the market. Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity to roll my stops. Hooray. Okay. So made our profit target at least. And I'm very pleased with that.
Oh, looks like the market's got a little extra to it. Just here out of curiosity, what if we, let's see, where do we start the day? If we throw our fib circles on here, oh, I bet you that's a 50% bounce right there. Let's. Playing with the fib circles. And yes, the market coming down, making a nice bounce there at the 50% level. And now we are actually at a 100% retracement. I wonder if that's also a regular 50%. Oh, it is too. a 162% retracement yet. Oh, wrong way. And yes, they have. Wow. This is the way fib traders like to to trade is to look for a pullback to bounce off of the 58, uh, pardon me, off the 50% level or here off the 38% level. And they will anticipate that the market will resume its trend and the 162 is kind of the big target that they would be pushing for. Just out of curiosity, let's see how this little move played out. So if we were analyzing this little down move here, we actually got almost almost to 100% retracement, but that one also, when the trend resumed, got back down here to the 162. Not easy to spot, but that is a rule of three on your eagle, even though there's only two counter trend signals. Okay, our trading band getting rather broad here on the Raptor. It's up to 67 ticks here on the Eagle. It's already up to 49, may as well say 50. Uh, it's making me think maybe a pullback is in order. We also at the secondary resistance zone, as you can see here on the Falcon. If you're inclined for counter trend trades, 
a, it looks as though the Raptor will be one of the first to give us a counter trend signal. The Bollinger is already bearish. But we need another little retest and a sell signal here to give us our number two signal. And if I throw a trend line across here, you can see a trend line retest should bring us very, very close to retesting the hard edge, which is the target for our counter trend move. Okay, there is the number two signal. And counter trend trades, folks, always, always more risky. I think I've mentioned uh, time and again that out of all my losing trades, the vast majority are counter trend attempts. The other big disadvantage of taking a counter trend trade, I feel, is that it blocks you from your with trend opportunities. But I want to point it out to you. So we've got the number two signal. The number two signal requires a test of the extreme. Now this is actually the test of the extreme. Even though it traded higher than this high right here, it is still a retest of the extreme. The market did not go, as the, in the programming, there's certain parameters that the market has to surpass in order for it to be considered a new high. So according to the Raptor, it did not, meet those parameters and that's why we're producing the number two signal you could leave your exit order up here and just use it as a new buy order with trend if the number two signal fails and the market continues higher
not quite a number three signal because we're not close enough to the hard edge yet. Rather, another retest of the high. This in turn will produce another number two signal when and if it continues lower. All right, well, there we go. We bought in on the long side. So this will now add as our stop loss order. And I will manually add a buy order or pardon me, a sell order for my exit order. I should probably pull this back ever so slightly in case the market does attempt a Retrace here to the hard edge. I hope it wasn't just a little bit of bad luck getting in on one of those one tick trends. There's not really one of our high probability signals occurring at this point. And here now the other number two signal that's developing. The Bollinger is actually kind of bearish. So it's still very much in limbo here. Yeah. See, it goes to show you it's worth holding out for the high probability signals, the ones where we get the pullbacks to the hard edge. Um, yeah, that was just unfortunate, but I suppose good for demonstration purposes, if nothing else. what not to do. <laughs>
Okay, here we go. A little bit of a pullback now. I might hold on for a move back here to the hard edge, both on the Eagle and the Raptor. The Hawk work in the first micro macro cross lower. So I think we can anticipate maybe a little bit of a move here back toward the, the hard edge. We have already encountered the first hard edge on the Raptor. Well, a little bit of support coming in. This, um, given the trend that we're looking at here this morning with the with the market, I think any counter trend signal, including the first micro macro cross here, you'll be better served with a second push opportunity. Back now to the macro line on the Hawk. We could get a macro pullback, but the bar has turned yellow, which is going to spoil that. The Falcon, however, might be doing a um, late filter entry signal. Filter out of sync trend line still holding, still red.
Okay, here now the number three signal on the Raptor, which is going to be our with trend signal. All right, you know what? I'm going to throw a just in case order above there. If the market continues higher. Come on, a little bit more. The Bollinger is in sync again with this. And If we continue higher from here, we may actually produce another number three signal. Not yet, though. We're back in this sideways mode. Okay, looks like we are going to get a move back here now to the to the hard edge and the primary resistance zone. Here we go, getting a little bit of a bounce again. This will be another number three signal. Still not convinced we're not going down to the second hard edge down here.
right, here we go. So we're going to produce a number three signal, or I'm going to look at that second push. There's that number three signal, the follow-up number three signal. I'm going to buy just above that little blue ATR line. Well, only if they go up. We're trying. Well, okay, I'm going to throw a just-in-case order to buy up here. This is essentially a second push on this signal, a bit of an extended second push on this one. I would be looking for a rather large move if we're going to do a measured move. Well, even a moderate move would look something like this. So let's see where that takes us. That'll easily take us to the next resistance zone, which I will use as my profit objective. So swinging for the fences on this one, when and if we get a breakout. This might have been the move of the day. It's a little smallish, but there you have it. We're heading back to the hard edge after all.
getting that number two signal developing now. All right, back now to the hard edge. I'm going to close out this order here. We'll put this back on the shelf for now. I was really thinking we were going to see a little bit more pushback, but it's not happening. We are now into the hard edge, and this should give us some sort of reaction. Okay, waiting for a reaction off of the hard edge. Isn't trading exciting?
Not much of a reaction to speak of just yet. There was a little bit of a hawk signal here that, you know, you can see in hindsight, but I don't know if the market's trying to get more bearish or not. We're back to our breakout zone, coincidentally, or not. So this was the trading range that we identified early on, including the overnight. The market broke out. Now we're back here. We are retesting. We would anticipate the market to recover off of that. So we're going to get, a, if that's going to happen, we're going to get a red bar buy here in the Eagle. Uh, we should produce a buy signal here on the Raptor, which technically will be a number three signal. It will not print as a number three signal because the market has drifted below the hard edge and the clouds are currently intertwined, but that is what it would be. All right, they're getting a little bit of a rally. What I would like to see is I would like to see also a trend line break for confirmation. Even if it means getting in a little bit later. Otherwise, we can look to short. If we get another rejection, say off of the trend line, or if the market just turns and starts heading lower, we will produce a rule of three here on the Eagle. So that will give us a chance to get short.
Okay, so we've got the the hard edge bounce signal. We've got the red bar buy signal. We've uh, even got a green bar sell of sorts that we could look to short. Let's see how it reacts to the breakout. And then I will set up a second push opportunity. Or get ready to short. going to be maybe one of the first here to give us a sell signal otherwise the eagle will give us a sell signal that will be a rule of three signal to short even though there's only going to be two counter trend signals Okay, there's the break now of the trend line. We'll see if there's any kind of reaction to that. There should be. Come on, just give me that little bit of a pullback. We'll produce a first micro macro cross. All right, well, maybe that little hesitation is all I'm gonna get that little hesitation bar right there. What I'll do is I will get my exit order out of the way and I will attempt to stretch my profit target again, looking at this whole measured move idea. Should put our profit somewhere around here. Stop it.
All right, here we go. Okay. So we got brought in. Let's see what kind of follow through, if any, we get off of this now. As we come up here to the secondary resistance zone, try to challenge the highs. Come on, keep going. Trying to give this trade a little bit more room. We were kissing our, our high probability profit objective, which would be just above that resistance zone. This is normally the time I take my trade to break even, but I'm really going to try to give this trade a chance. Here we go. We've got a little bit of a bounce coming now that we're going to break the highs. to see another bull bar here come on there we go okay I'm going to take that opportunity now roll my stops up around the break even point if the buyers fail you know there could be a little bit more bullish uh, pardon me bearish pushback off of these highs but if the buyers fail at this point I will just take my break even stop out. Getting the follow up number one signal. As we get closer to my profit objective, I will squeeze the trade a little bit more. Come on, don't stop. Uh, we did hit our high probability profit target. If I were smart, I would have taken profit at that point. But hey, it's not like me to do things the easy way.
darn it. <laughs> oh, well. All right, gang. I think we're going to close up shop here for the morning. The market seems relatively quiet. If you are going to hang out here some more today, well, we've had another breakout of a high, so the trend does seem to be up. Uh, you'll probably want to try to stay with the buyers. Um, if they take out th this swing low, which admittedly is a long ways away, then you can consider shorting. But so long as the market is taking out highs, making new swing highs, it's probably going to remain a buyer's market. All right, on that note, um, like I said, we'll close up shop. I will see you again tomorrow. Have yourselves a great day. Be careful out there. Talk to you soon.